Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Friday, July 28th and the energies in the day adds up and reduce to the number six vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to say today, let's see what kind of spirit animal is walking in to our world. So we are working with the frog spirit today. And when the frog spirit comes into my world, some of the things that I think about is fertility. And when I think about fertility, it can be fertility focusing on, say, having children, or it could be fertility in the sense of the motivation uh, and imagination to make something happen for ourselves. I also think about emotions because look at the uh, the water sprinkling on the back of the frog's back. I also think about balance when I think about frog energy. And the reason why I think about balance, because I think about how the frog is on the earth and within the water. So frog energy or frog spirit brings me to say the importance of balancing, balancing our emotions with practicality and not going too far uh, from one extreme to the next or not being too far on one end opposed to the other and when it comes to say the tarot associated with this energy is the queen of cups so with the queen of cups coming out and the frog energy big emphasis on emotions and with the queen of cups in the upright position it brings me to say the importance of you know strong healthy emotions and for me strong healthy emotions comes from eating properly or doing my best because it's not always easy to eat properly because I'll have moments where I'm consistent and I'm doing well and then I'll fall off and spiral down for a while and then catch myself while I'm free falling and then get back on track again and then that cycle keeps happening but at the end of the day I try but when it comes to say emotional you know working on my emotions and being emotionally balanced I find that the foods that I eat play a big part in regulating my emotions and more than anything journaling uh, journaling and even recording myself uh, doing different things that allow me to express what's inside of me yes some of us have certain people that we call up and we vent but if we're honest with ourselves you know being in the position of the person where someone's always venting to you it feels like they're always dumping on you it's almost like a toilet where someone's hitting you up and always taking a poop where I feel like where I feel like journaling and uh, recording yourself venting it allows for us to release any negative emotions or energy and just let it go and then also to we're actually honest in the process of sharing what we're going through when we're journaling because when we're speaking to people and we're venting most of the times or a lot of the times most of us are trying to convince the person to see things our way from our perspective and from that they're not able to give their the best advice or the advice or the advice they, they give us the advice that we want to hear because we manipulated what they heard where if we were to tell the exact truth we might not hear what we want to hear from them where when you're journaling or speaking out loud and it's just you you know you you're able to be honest with yourself you're able to be transparent and then you're able to come up with solutions and give yourself really good advice because you're dealing with the whole truth so when i think about the energies in today i think about the importance of emotions i think about the importance of checking in when i look at say the day adding up and reducing to number six vibration emotions are super important and regulating our emotions are super important 
when the number six energy is present because the number six energy deals with the material realm. This is where we take care of others. The number six is a nurturing energy. It's, it's, it's an energy that deals with love, romance. It also is big on community. This is where you see social workers and different people who dedicate their lives to make the communities of the world a better place. And these are the type of people that love being in the presence of friends and others. But the downside of the number six energy is that materialism take precedence over our lives, or it's like the way we conduct ourselves, the way we look and the, and what people think about us and the things that we own, you know, have such, you know, are so heavy take up so much weight in our lives. And on a sixth day or when the number six is strong, I always encourage people to avoid social media and avoid social media because no matter how much of a hard worker you are or how much you achieve, achieve materially, it's hard for us to always see ourselves. So, you know, on a day like this, a person might be scrolling through social media and all of a sudden just feel like they're not doing enough. They're not enough and go and spiral into a really dark and sad place because with the number six energy, it tends to define success based on material things. It tends to define success based on having a beautiful mate that looks a certain kind of way or owning and participating in things that are, you know, sociably celebrated. So with the number six energy, you know, also I think about, you know, how important it is for us to know how we want to be appreciated because the number six energy being so big on social and socializing normally this is where we're so focused on what everybody else needs that's why the number six is a social worker and a lot of the times those people who are so focused on helping and giving back to everyone else don't know what they need to feel nurtured or to feel loved and have a hard time expressing that so when it comes to say a day like today i think a day like today is great to reflect on how do you like to be nurtured? Because a lot of us will feel like the people in our lives take us for granted and they don't show any appreciation. But then if you know some of us were to get caught off guard and ask how or what can a person do to make us feel appreciated, we'll find that we don't know or we can't answer. Or the response that we give is a response that just sounds good, but isn't connected to our truth. And even for some people who actually do know, have a hard time expressing it because sometimes some of us are in the position where it's like, we like to be the ones who are doing all the giving because it gives us control over a situation. And just to show up and be ourselves and allow other people to love on us and give to us just feels completely uncomfortable because that's just not something that we were, were we, we were used to growing up. I think about how, say, today is Friday, and Friday is associated with Venusian energy. So Venus is the ruler of the day. And Venus is in Leo. And for whatever reason, I missed when Venus went retrograde. I guess I overlooked it, and I didn't talk about it. But with Venus retrograde, Venus energy deals with the things that we value. It deals with pleasure. It deals with luxury. It deals with fairness. It just deals with everything that brings a sense of comfort to our senses. And with Venus and retrograde, we're reflecting on those things, all the things that brings a sense of comfort to our senses, even peace, because Venus deals with, say, truth and diplomacy. And what does that do? It brings peace. You know, it creates a, a comfortable environment for everyone to be in. And with Venus in Leo, we're reflecting on our inner child. We're reflecting on our courage. Like, how can we be more courageous? How could we get out of our way and get out there and make things happen for ourselves so that our inner child can feel seen? Today, Mercury enters into Virgo. And Mercury is going to be in Virgo until... Uh, October 4th when it goes into Libra and while Mercury is in Virgo you know on August 23rd it will go into retrograde but for now while Mercury is in Virgo the mind is in a place where we're focused on being efficient we're focusing we're focused on getting things in order and also perfection is a thing so while the mind which is Mercury is in Virgo we could find ourselves in a place where it's like we're picking ourselves apart or picking other people apart being way more critical than normal and when we're being critical when Mercury is here 
we justify it by saying that it's because I care about you while I'm telling you all these things. And there is truth to that because with people who are strongly associated with Virgo energy, it's, it's because they care about the people in their lives while they'll try to fix them. But if we find ourselves being critical, nitpicking, and trying to fix other people, that's a clear sign that that energy needs to be directed, directed at us. Because I think it's so easy to try to correct things in others that are incorrect within ourselves. Because for whatever reason, if others were perfect, maybe it would rub off, rub off on us and help us to be perfect also. Who knows? That's just a thought. Mercury, not Mercury, the moon moves into the moon moves into Sagittarius or the moon is in Sagittarius. And with the moon in Sagittarius, with the moon in Sagittarius, uh, the moon is in a place where we escape reality, but we escape reality through traveling. We escape reality through exploring. We escape reality through learning. That's not a bad way at all to, you know, to, that's not a bad way to escape reality. But the issue when the moon is in Sagittarius is that we're disconnected from our feelings, our emotions. It's like we don't want to feel them. And when I think about Sag energy, I think about how uh, the archer is one of, is a sim, one of the symbolism. And, you know, if you're an archer, the bow and arrow is pointing away from you. So wherever Sag is in your chart, you'll find that you are trying to avoid that part of your life and, and is more consumed or, or intrigued or curious or want to be where the opposition is. So say, for example, someone has Sag on the rising. You might find that relationships is something that you might feel completes you or there's a big, strong, strong emphasis or a need for relationships because the arrow is in the first house focused on the seventh house. So it might feel like you're complete after you find your person. But with the moon and Sag, I said it in my moon videos and, and most agree. And of course, there's a few people that's like, no, that's not true. But based on my observation and thoughts, whenever you have the moon and Sag, you might find that, you know, you might love your mother dearly, but you could only be in her presence for so long or your home and your family. It's like you love them, you care about them, but when you're around them, it's almost like you feel like you gotta go, you gotta go, or you need to find a reason or an excuse to go. And even if you stay, because maybe that's where you need to live for the moment, you might find that you do different things to keep yourself busy so that you are escaping you know, the home, the mother or the family, but you're escaping through things that you're learning or different things that you're doing. So when I look at the moon and Saj and the fact that you know, we're trying to get away from our moon, our inner world and what it is that we're feeling and, you know, get away through knowledge or exploring or exploring and exploring could be anything. We can explore anything. But at the same time, the issue with that to me is that uh, a person could have built up resentment and different things happening within them, but they're not even aware that they are there because they've never took the time to even acknowledge or deal with that. And some people could find themselves, you know, where there's substance abuse or different things to just avoid and ignore what's happening within. The moon is a part of a T-square. So on a day like today, the inner world is, it, it, it is a bit under pressure with the challenges being made to the moon. But the challenges being made to the moon is with Saturn and Pisces and Mercury conjunct Venus and Mercury is in Leo and Venus is also in Leo. So something about maybe some news we're hearing, some information that we're hearing or feeling restricted in some ways, like something clipped our wings, something is forcing us to be still. Maybe, you know, someone thought that they were able, that they were going to be able to uh, move forward on something way you know you, you thought you were you were you'd be able to start something and you heard that you got to be still or you heard it's not time but it feels like there's some kind of a restriction and that's why i say it's like something clipped your wing it's like you got to be still when i go back to the frog and the queen of cups energy this brings me to the importance of you know keeping your emotions right as i'm saying this it brings me to a uh, an experience i had one day where one of my clients in the salon gifted me a generous amount of money. And there was a series of events that happened before I crossed paths with her. 
And when I woke up that morning, you know, some things happened that made me get in my feelings and had a bad attitude. And someone yelled out to me, smile, it's not that bad. And I looked up and realized, oh my God, it is a beautiful day. I should be smiling. And just from that person, like a domino effect, my emotions turned around and I was able to align myself with the frequency in order to attract what was coming my way or what was for me. So I'm saying all that to say to a day like today is super important for you to be conscious of your energy, conscious of your emotions, because you don't want to block your blessings. So it's like, imagine that we have to be tuned into a certain station in order to hear what it is that we want, we need to hear or receive what it is that we're waiting for. And if your emotions is off, it's going to cause you to turn from the station that you need to be on. And then you're going to miss whatever it is that you needed to be waiting for. So it's important for you to be conscious about you know, your energy, your emotions today. A positive thing happening with the moon is that it is positively aspecting the sun. So I think that's beautiful. The the moon, our inner world, our mother, the sun, our identity, our father is on a court. It's on the same page. So at least there is no battle within us when it comes to say what's happening within and who we identify as. All of that is on the same court. So even though there's other things happening that's stressful, at least there is no battle within the sacred space. It's like, say, living in the home and the mother and the father are on uh, good terms. So even if there's chaos or war happening around us because the home feels safe, you know, everything else will work itself out. So that's where our identity, who we identify as our sun, our moon, our inner world, our inner conversation are one and is at peace. And from that, it's like, regardless of everything else that's happening this day, you know, it just, everything else just doesn't feel that bad, even though it could be perceived that way. Pluto squares the North node today. And The North Node talks about destiny. The North Node is in Pisces. So while the North Node, I'm sorry, the North Node is in Aries. While the North Node is in Aries, destiny is focused on ourselves as individuals. What is it about, say, your will or your ability to take action that's restricting or getting in the way of destiny? Are you someone who tends to over plan or overthink things? And from that, you've been in a nonstop cycle of keep on saying, I'm a do, I'm a do, I'm a do. Or are you a productive procrastinator? And for me, a productive procrastinator brings me to like Virgo energy because Virgo energy is such a productive energy, but also procrastinating energy because perfection is what stops us from getting started. So to me, and it was through Virgo energy and observing Virgo energy in my chart is how I came up with the productive procrastinator. And I'm sure uh, other signs show that energy. But to me, the productive procrastinator is the person that wants to start something that scares them. And they come up with productive ways to better themselves, but not realizing that these productive ways to better themselves It's just different ways to delay and delay and delay and delay them stepping into something that terrifies them. So that's how we productively procrastinate. Um, The North Node squaring Pluto brings me to say how destiny and wherever destiny is for you is being challenged by control and transformation. When I say control and transformation, Pluto is a transformative energy wherever Pluto is in your chart, you know, there's power struggles when it comes to that thing. And I feel like we experience power struggles because for whatever reason, maybe some of us have experienced pain or sadness or disappointment within a certain area. So we try to take control to avoid ever feeling that again. But Pluto is in Capricorn and with Pluto in Capricorn and retrograde, we're reflecting on taking uh, control over our careers, over our legacies and our place in the world. And when I think about Pluto squaring the North Node, it's like something about transforming that aspect of our lives. It's challenging our will to take action, our will to make things happen. It brings me back to the thought of, you know, say yesterday's message with Jupiter and Taurus and the whole practical aspect of that because I look at how Pluto is positively aspecting, which is trining Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Taurus. And with Jupiter and Taurus, you know, we're going to feel safer to gravitate towards anything that feels rooted and grounded. Anything that has a form of familiarity 
not necessarily familiarity and rootedness. So anything that it's like, because I'm familiar with this thing and I have a history with this thing, I feel safer with it, even if it makes me unhappy. And I think of with Pluto and Capricorn squaring the North node, you know, the challenge is like, you know, my destiny calls me to put myself out there, uh, put myself out there and take chances with the North node in Aries because Aries is the head. Destiny calls me to be the head in this moment in order to pursue certain things in my life with Pluto and Capricorn uh, and retrograde reflecting on say the system and not feeling safe enough to put ourselves out there, bet on ourselves, take chances on certain things, or even tell people we're going after certain things and trying to make it happen out of the fear and the shame of not making it happen and what they will say or what they will think. And what they will say and what they will think is absolutely none of our business. And if that's where our focus and our attention is, it's on the wrong things because our focus and our attention should be on us. It's not fair for us to abandon and betray ourselves worrying about someone else when we need to be within our own homes, within ourselves and trying to understand ourselves on a deeper level. You guys, such a pleasure sharing this message with you as usual. If you'd like to book a natal chart reading with me or check out my exclusive weekly contents only on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a white heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.